Ah, a long wordy question here. Always these are a bit more challenging because they're more applied. And the way the requirement is worded, which of the following factors should not be allowed for? So it's a negatively worded question. Which of the following should not be allowed for when comparing the return on capital employed of two organizations to assess the efficiency of their management? Anytime it's a negatively worded question like this, I always find myself tied up in knots a little bit and it's quite easy to spend a long time on these sort of questions and still never be quite sure whether you've got it right. So in the exam I'd be thinking about flagging this one and coming back to it later when I because I don't want to waste lots of time on this one but if you are going to attack it first time around well what we're looking at here is comparing whether two organizations how good is their management how efficient is their management team how well are their management team working and we're comparing two organizations which are going to have quite different factors and features about them and so i want to what this question is really asking is which of these things is not necessarily different between our two organizations so let's run through the two organizations then the first organization, the Eastland Postland Service, is owned by the government. OK, so it's government controlled, government run, and therefore its objectives are going to be to do well, whatever the government wants. We've got to provide a parcel delivery service to everywhere in Eastland at a low price, which is set by the government. OK, so if we look at that first one there, the government sets the price so it's not fair to assess management on their price for the first organization eastland postland services okay let's just talk about the second one then express couriers so a different company privately owned and so that means they're not controlled by the government they're there to try to make a make a profit make dividends for their shareholders um, they operate in the same country of eastland OK, they are not subject to government regulation. So very different priorities and they service large businesses quite different because the other guys, they service home and business. So if I'm going to compare the efficiency of management of these two organizations, there are well, which of these factors are different and which are the same between the two companies? So I'm not going to worry too much about the wording here. And I'm going to think about how three of these answers have to be the same category and one needs to be different. So prices, first of all, I know that prices for the uh, first company very different to in the second company because uh, one is set by government and one is not. So I'm just going to note that these are different. What about the second factor that their ob the objectives now, is that, is that the same or is that different between the two organisations? Well, Eastland is all about doing whatever the government wants and uh, Express Couriers, very different because they're not subject to government. And so very different in terms of their objectives. OK, so I can put these first two into the same bucket. They're different between the two organisations. Now, let's look at that third factor, differences in workforce motivation. Well, they're both recruiting in the same country in Eastland. And we're not told anything at all about their workers. Nothing at all. So I'm going to suggest that they're both trying to recruit from the same place, the same country and the same type of people that do, different, do deliveries. So I'm going to say that this factor is going to be the same between the two organisations. And then the final one, the geographic area served. The uh, government controlled one has to go to every single part of the country, whereas the second organization is only in the capital city. So these two are different in terms of their geographical areas that are served. OK, now exam technique there, what I've done there is identified that the third factor is is, is is something that stands out. I can't categorize it in the same way as number one, two and, th and four. 
So why is differences in workforce motivation? Why is that the correct answer then? Because I know that it is. It's different to the, <laughs> it's a, the other three are in a, in a separate category. So when I'm looking at the efficiency of management, it's not fair to judge them on the prices, objectives or their geographic areas because that's outside of their control. But workforce motivation, well, that is something that is within the control of managers. You know, how well do they manage? That will drive how motivated the workforce are. And so if I want to assess how efficient management are, it makes sense to take this into account. Now, the wording of this is such a horrible wording. Not to be allowed for means it should be taken into account, which is it's a horrible diet double negative, which makes this a really tricky question. So for me, exam technique wise on this sort of question where I'm not very clear about how it's being asked, I try to put three of the answers into one bucket and one of the answers into a separate bucket. And I know that the one that is separate is going to be correct.